Okay, I think my work is actually super contemporary. But it's weird that it's in, uh, obviously because I'm drawing inspiration from um, a very traditional painting and periods of traditional painting. I think it is so. I think when you draw any paint or draw anything realistically, you're kind of put in this box of, okay, this is the older style and it's not contemporary. But I learned to paint entirely on the digital platform. So I learned to draw very mechanically, a very sort of just with my hands. Yeah. And, um, but when I moved into the digital platform, um, what, I, what I was doing was A, I'm not sitting there mixing colors. I have like all the colors in the universe is available to me, you know, they're right there. Um, so it, it's, the, if, you, if you were to watch me paint, it's very fluid. So I, you know, I, I'll use a stylus, uh, which sort of replicates kind of something between a felt marker and a, and a brush, you know, it's kind of like it's, and, um, but there's certain techniques that I will use. Um, for instance, like, I'll start a painting, I don't care what size the canvas is, so I'm purely thinking concept, right? right? So when you do a traditional painting, you know, you have to, well, first of all, you do, you sketch, you draw the, it's onerous, you draw the right. whole thing out, right. then you do a complete color sketch, right. then you do your final. So you've, right. you've already created the boxes, right. you know, the sketch stage might have been the loosest you were, where there's no right. boundary, but right. then you place it in this boundary box, and then you add detail, detail, right. detail. For me, if I do a painting like this one here, for instance, this painting was just about like three bands of colors. So I just started with the background and I just, and initially the painting was like this and then it grew into this. Then I'm like, you know what, I need this. So I kept adding space as I needed it. So it's really fluid. Um, and, and I started in a very sort of abstract space. You know, I wasn't as concerned about the figure. I knew the placement of the figure and I knew that this, this is what I really want to direct the view to um, in terms of detail. But the whole spatial energy, the mood, the fact that everything feels intangible, you're not really sure where Guru Gobind Singh Ji is mm -hmm, walking. Mm -hmm. you, you, it's, it's because it's, it's kind of a mental space. So interesting. Right? Um, so I, don't, I didn't want to ground anything, right. you know? And I really wanted to connect with um, Guru Saab, Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji and that communion, that silent Absolutely. communion between the two. Every time I do a new painting, I challenge myself never to let it be like the old, I, like yeah. the last painting. Right. So what can I do that's different? What can I, what's the uncomfortable space I can move right. into? And usually I do that in like increments. So this right. was a wholesale deep dive into an uncomfortable right. space. Right. And so it was, it was very challenging. Now, the key thing was some of the concepts we wanted to yeah. convey in here. We wanted to convey the idea of two different moments in time, two yeah. pivotal moments in time. Um, so we're, on the one hand, we are talking about Guru Nanak as they emerged out of the water with the message, yeah. saying that why Guru is inside, yeah. why Guru is within. It, you know, and in, outside. In, yeah. In, yeah. And then Guru Gobind Singh is saying that why Guru can also be manifested in our outer forms, yeah. um, and um, and then it, there's also the concept of why guru is everywhere. Yeah. So in here we come out of this very sort of blank space, and we move into this sort of territory, and that's why all these figures is like, well, why guru is everywhere? Why guru is within everything? Um, and then I just wanted to emphasize the importance of Guru Granth Sahib and how Guru Granth Sahib, you know, comes the essence of it begins here and mm -hmm. manifests mm -hmm. beyond the gurus and is our and teacher also, from that point onwards. And the Kanda as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, it is yeah. really the yeah. teachings, the Miri, the Piri, the yeah. Amrit Sanchar, there's so much in there. Yeah. I mean, this is why we obviously called it first to the 10th, yeah. first to the 10th, yeah. why guru inside and out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I remember when the conversations were happening, happening about this painting and I did think to myself, one, I wonder how you're processing those because for us in terms of an arts organization in progression as well, that if we want to move beyond the historical and now start speaking about the mind specifically, this is a very abstract notion of yeah. how do you depict something. Yeah. So obviously Siri Guru Nanak Dev Ji and Siri Guru Gobind Singh Ji are talking about 
um, something that cannot be seen, it can be heard, mm -hmm. but has no shape and it has no form. This Rup yeah. Narek, which is yeah. why grew themselves. Mm -hmm. And I remember those conversations vividly and I was like, wow, good luck. Because, mm -hmm. you know, even now when we're trying to talk about why guru and people, you know, we know historically in other faiths how God is depicted yes. old man, yeah. powerful. Yeah. And we yeah. know that that's not true. Yeah. And yeah, I remember just thinking, I wonder what I wonder what you're going to do to be able to do that because these, when I say abstract notions, I don't mean that the, the the teaching is abstract. It's just like if something doesn't have a shape and a form, how do you? you yeah, w w yeah. What, what do you do? I mean, I I just went back to certain ideas. I mean, I had thought about like the idea that Waiguru is in everyone. Waiguru is in everything. So that's why this painting has nothing really solid about it. Right. Um, that's why both Guru Nanak Dev Ji and Guru, uh, Guru, Guru Gobind Singh Ji, they're both Satguru, they're, 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 they're of the same, they're, you know, yeah. they're, they're, the message is deeply interconnected, uh, just manifested differently. And um, everything is within everything else, yeah. everything is interconnected, everything is flowing. You know, so I wanted to get a sense there's no beginning, there's no end. And, and so I, I try to just, instead of saying, okay, how do I, I, I just allowed like just sort of a mood to yeah. sort of carry it. Yeah. Um, and I just decided to just, I, as the painting progressed, I learned to let go more and more. Initially, I was really just almost being too, like putting too much into it. Right. And then as, as I sort of got eliminated the things that was that were unnecessary, that was maybe old, old, and just allowed it to be more an expression of color and movement and a few simple forms, the yeah. painting worked. You know what I've also really enjoyed about this one is that people can't understand who this is. Yeah, yeah. And they'll always say, is this a younger, yes, a younger yeah. Siri Guru Gobind Singh? Yeah, yeah. Which, do you know what, as provocation, as a thought, like it doesn't matter. Mm. But for me, I know we've had so many conversations where we're like, we have to start showing Siri Guru Nanak Dev Ji yes. as a young man because mm -hmm. that's when it all started. Obviously, yes. their Udasi started when they're in their twenties, but they're, you yeah. know, they were Antarjami, they were Satguru from birth. Yeah. But the fact that we always depict them as yeah. this old man mm -hmm. is is just such a shame because they were such a rebellious, you know, revolutionary teacher that from birth, you yes. know. And it's so it's so amazing to know. And you know what? The other thing is that we have these paintings are moments in history as in historical history but they're now especially we'll go to the book in a second but we're capturing moments this is history as well teaching yeah. people that we're almost sort of saying yo we might have been you know all those old masters that have painted Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji mm. it's now our time and our responsibility yes. to sort of say hang on one second yeah we want to we need other imagery to show yes that yeah. they you know that they were young yeah absolutely I mean we get so stuck on I mean, even for myself, when I first started, um, I, even I found it hard to mentally break away from that idea of Gurdanak Devji as, as an old man. Um, which, and, uh, and then we fall into this idea, this strange idea that we have that Guru Nanak is the peaceful one and Guru Gobind Singh is the warlike one. And, and, and it's really like, you know, they, they, they were both speaking of the same revolutionary message. Guru Nanak Devji criticized the king's the tyrants of his time. Um, he witnessed like how the forces of greed and avarice, like how much they tormented the land, how people, people. suffered under yeah. them. So Guru Nanak's message was about suffering, but as much of the internal as well as external. He was very critical of that. But in his time, he was able to sort of like, like, you know, he, he gave us that message. And then it took, you know, nine remaining you know yeah. figures and lead uh, with guru, and with guru gobind singh ji at the, at the last to build that community that could then manifest change yeah they talk about simran they talk about bhakti they talk yeah. about the internal and controlling your mind from the inside that's the contemporary connection because somebody said to me um oh it's the thing that you're talking about with this exhibition is the spiritual evolution of sikhi mm -hmm. and i was like well if if spirituality is above and over time, how is that? The only thing is, we're doing exactly the same as all these gurus and these warriors did yeah. in the practice of Simran. That's a direct connection Absolutely. between myself and these amazing, amazing human beings. 
But the only thing that's changed or evolved is the time, mm -hmm. the things on the outside, the things that these eyes see, that's what's evolved. Yeah. And that, that I just think is so, that's what's so powerful about this. Yeah. I know you mentioned it before that you very rarely see your work yeah. put together like this. Yeah. Um, and we have the gurus, it's almost like unintentional but intentional at the same time that the gurus are on the outskirts, that they're like encompassing all yeah. the history. What, is, like, what do you think of this? Not curatorially, but in terms of your work, seeing all these people together. I mean, I, it, it's definitely, it's, like I said, you get so focused when you're painting one painting that, ev that what you've done before sort of drops away. And maybe that's sort of a good thing yeah. for me because then stylistically, I, I feel like I, I'm not trying to create a link. Right. Um, but there are just connections in all of them in the sense that there's one approach that I always do, consciously, subconsciously. I'm showing his bravery, I'm showing his valor, I'm showing the peace that he manifests. But at the same time, that sort of energy that I want to sort of uh, convey is conveyed through like the background, through like other elements, you know? Um, so in all of the paintings, I, I realize like more and more that like, I, I always, I'm always focused on the abstract concept of the painting and then I sort of then I fill it then I uh, so I take an abstract painting and I think I bring it into sort of a, a traditional right. rendering in the final but frankly it's like the abstract shapes here you know what I mean yeah, for instance this this is like a, like this is like a carpon yeah right and it's just to emphasize so using using a a form that we understand, but using it also as a righteous weapon against the unrighteous, and sort of embedding that in, in the painting. Um, and all the colors are a big part of that, like just sort of the backgrounds, you know? Uh, for instance, the painting of Bhai Bachitra Singh Ji, I, I just, I wanted to capture this sense of almost eternity or something, just something like this sort of absolutely gorgeous, beautiful moment locked away in time. So the, the clouds are billowing, it's just, it's sort of like, I wanted to emphasize this sort of like, um, it's, it's such a magnificent moment in history. Right. So I really, so I used the, like, um, and so I used just an unusual color palette. Right. I use these sort of billowing clouds, but it has a sense of like a faraway time to yeah. it, you know? It, it, so a lot of the times, the, the, what's happening with the colors in the background, the sunsets, but they're not arbitrary. I don't just say, okay, it's, I'm gonna make it orange or I'm gonna do whatever. The, the colors that I pick kind of reflects also the sort of psychological space right. that is the figure that the individual is manifesting. Amazing. So I'm, I'm kind of using the landscape to show this is the state of their mind in a way. Right. So. Difficult one. Mm -hmm. Anybody that's here, especially when I was here, um, yeah. we did a tour on Thursday morning. Yeah. Um, and I guess if you're a Sikh and you know Sikh history, yeah. this, you don't even come, you don't even give it a second, a second glance in the sense that you're like, Oh yeah, I know who this is the story of. But mm. somebody who doesn't know this story finds the notion of this action to be incredibly difficult. Because yeah. like, what is about to happen? Yeah. What is it about this one yeah. that hasn't turned into a painting yet? And I actually quite like it in its raw form. Yeah, but no, like, this, what is this, it? The, I already see this painting completely. I just have not had a chance to, okay. to come at it. But there's something, two things I want to convey in this painting. Um, so this painting about Taru Singh and um, and he, he, he's essentially about to be scalped. So it, it's a painting of peace meeting just ferocious violence. So the way I will convey that is I want to convey absolute stillness here, absolute peace and acceptance. And the way I will do this figure is in a very kind of fierce, sort of almost Francis Bacon-esque, oh, no. I want to show like, and it's moving. I, would, I don't even want it to say like, it's, it's, it's just, I want to get a sense of movement right, and, and violence. It's just like, yeah, so it's an epic, just it's, I want people to almost cringe at it, yeah. but at the same time, I want this, this is the focus, this face, and I want, and then the wall behind it will radiate like a sort of a sunset lit back wall. 
So it'll be like, um, and just, be just, I just want a sort of a golden radiance to all of this. These stories are so incredibly powerful. Yeah. And, and that, for that reason, that's why we're here, isn't it? That's why right. we're in the Library of Birmingham, where we can't lose mm. this time, and for, especially for the next generation. Yeah. And they should see our history. What connects all six, mm -hmm. from what I've seen, what I've felt, mm -hmm. is that there's this vibrant, these stories, you know, the story of Bhai Bachitra Singh, the story of uh, uh, the many stories of Guru Gobind Singh. I mean, I, you, you, I will see Sikhs who are not, you know, traditional Sikhs, but they'll tear up talking about Guru Gobind Singh. So obviously they're connected and they have a connection. Um, and it's such a powerful connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think it's real. like, it's, I really feel it's important that we are supportive and encourage artists in our own community and we create spaces for them where they will interpret our stories, you know, and, and not just our recent stories of sort of the immigrant struggle or whatever, yes. but the bigger yes. story, because I don't know if we're gonna care about the immigrant struggle another generation from now, yeah. okay, it's done. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. we're here now. Yeah, um, and but, we can see that already in our yeah. own children, right? Like, yeah. the, like how interested are our children yeah. in our grandparents' stories? Yeah, they, they wanna connect back to our, they want mm. something that's Much exciting and we have such an exciting past. Yeah. So we have to be careful that we don't lose it. We have to be careful that it doesn't get dwarfed by a, a broader culture. And I, the thing is, it's so easy to get children to be engaged in these stories. Yeah. So I, I, I'm glad that we've created this space and I hope yeah. we create more spaces where yeah. individuals can do that.